Hello guys. Today is cell organelles. And, ugh, fly. I'm outside. Um, <laughs> yesterday we took a look at just the basics of cells. That all cells have three things in common. What were those three things? So one, two, three. What were those three things that all cells have in common? One, that they all have cell membranes. Hi. Two, they all have cytoplasm. And three, they all have DNA. So now yeah. we're going to take a look. No, you can't write on it. Tonight we're going to take a look at just uh, eukaryotic cells. Uh, bacteria we'll Boom. cover later. Um, but eukaryotic cells, because they have all sorts of organelles. Amy, stop. They have all sorts of organelles. We need to learn their function. So what is an organelle? Right here. An organelle has the word organ in it, and L usually means a little version of. So an organelle is just a mini organ. And so if you look at a cell as being a body, it's got a brain, and it's got a um, blood system as delivery. It's got a stomach as enzymes. And so the cell has the same stuff, but instead of a brain, it's a nucleus. Instead of a blood supply, it's an endoplasmic reticulum. Instead of a stomach, it's lysosomes. And so based on um, all the major functions of the body, you can find a mini version of it inside of a cell. Plants and animals do have different types of organelles, but for the most part, they have most of them in common with each other. Except for animals have something called a centriole. Plants have a cell wall and chloroplast, and there's some others that will add to it, but for the most part, uh, they have most of these items in common with each other. All right, let's take our tour through the cell. First thing, so I highlighted all the organelles in red to make it easier for you to see. Um, and then I put lots of different pictures because I, I want you to see that the cell can be represented in many, many different ways. I don't want you to be too focused on one particular style. So the cell membrane is uh, also known as the phospholipid bilayer. Why? Because there's a layer of phospholipids. If you remember that glycerol with two fatty acids. And there's another layer right on the other side of it like this. So the cell membrane is also known as the phospholipid bilayer. You can find that answer, or that's one of the answers on your packet. It says, what's the other name of the cell membrane? So the phospholipid bilayer, and it surrounds the cell. You can see it here in blue completely surrounds and maintains a boundary between the inside and the outside of the cell. The cell wall. Now this is only found in plant cells. This one's special. Uh, the cell wall is outside of the cell membrane. So here's the cell membrane and then here's a nice big thick cell wall around the outside. And if you remember from last section is that the cell wall is made out of cellulose. So that's a type of polysaccharide that is very strong and rigid and gives support to the plant cell. So cell wall main thing is support. And the next one, cytoplasm, you'll also see it called cytosol and it, they're used interchangeably. It all depends on what textbook you learn it from. We'll probably just call it cytoplasm to make it easier. Cytoplasm is the liquid that we, just kind of floats uh, all the organelles in. It's found between the outer nucleus membrane and then uh, between that and the cell membrane. So this whole entire layer right here um, <laughs> do you mind all this fluid in here is all cytoplasm and it's what all the organelles float around in it's also the site of many chemical reactions is that purple? it is purple because chemical reactions need a fluid medium in order to occur okay the nucleus this big guy right here in the middle usually it looks like uh, a fried egg so for fried eggs has that it's got a little dot in the middle we'll talk about that in a second so the middle of the fried egg here is the nucleus, and his main job is just to hold the DNA. And so the DNA is what controls the cell's activities. So sometimes we say that the nucleus controls the cell's activities, but it's because yeah. of the DNA inside. Yeah, I know, huh? Can you say deoxyribonucleic acid? Okay. <laughs> the nuclear membrane, the outside of the nucleus is actually a double layered membrane like this. And sometimes you'll also hear it called the nuclear envelope. It's the same thing. But basically it is a two layered membrane. Don't climb on here. And it surrounds the nucleus. So we've got the cell membrane oh, has- Oh, yep it goes. Okay, you need to go play. Yeah. The cell membrane has two layers and the nucleus also has uh, two layers. And you can see there's little holes and stuff in it as well. So there's a layer that touches the inside of the nucleus and a layer that touches the outside of the nucleus. The nuclear pores are just these little holes that allow passage for materials to pop in and out of. They kind of like, look like little volcanoes on the surface of, this, of the nuclear membrane. 
and they just provide a passageway. DNA is too big to get out, so the only thing that gets out through here is usually um, mRNA or various types of RNA, which we'll talk about in a couple of chapters. So just know DNA is too big to get out of the holes. They're stuck in the DNA. Nucleolus is, um, when you look at a, a nucleus, this is a nucleus, this whole thing, it always has this darker region inside called the nucleolus. And it's just a mini version of the nucleus. But here's all the DNA around the outside. There's no DNA in it. This is the site of ribosomes. Uh, it's a ribosome factory. Ribosomes, we're going to learn in a minute, are just uh, little balls like that, and that's where they're all created. So since ribosomes have to get out to the cytoplasm, you can imagine that ribosomes can also make it through these little nuclear pores. DNA uh, is not technically an organelle, but it is found in the nucleus, so I thought we'd mention it anyway. Deoxyribonucleic acid, and uh, its point is to contain the genes, so they're responsible for you looking the way you do, and then passing on those traits onto your children. Chromatin is what we find inside of the nucleus. It's just DNA that's bound around proteins. So here's my strand of DNA right here. And we start wrapping it around these big proteins, and it makes these little balls. And what they do is they kind of pack all tight with each other, and it makes these big thick ropes. And then these ropes just kind of sit in here like a big ball of spaghetti. And that's what chromatin is. It's just the loosely arranged version of DNA because DNA is so long it would just get all tangled up so if I can stick it around some proteins what that does is just to help um, keep it from tangling up so much yes the cactus is growing I flowers. know that's so cool <laughs> that. chromosomes this one right here chromosomes is just a more tightly condensed version of chromatin when cells are about ready to divide, they need to organize themselves. And so what they do is they take these big bundles or ropes here and they start coiling them up even more. And then it forms this little furry X. And that furry X is a chromosome. We have 46 in uh, every single one of our cells. And then other animals have different numbers. Ribosomes are these little bitty round BB looking things. And they're, they look like round balls, but later on, when we look at them up close, they look like hamburger buns to me. Uh, but these ribosomes, they're very small compared to all the rest of the organelles. Their job is to make proteins. They are there for assembling proteins. They can be found in a couple of places, either stuck to the endoplasmic reticulum or just kind of free floating around. So depending on where they are, they get two different names. They're either free ribosomes or attached ribosomes, depending on where they are. Endoplasmic reticulum, also known as the ER. <clears throat> this is where lipid components of the cell membrane are made. So remember, the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, and so this is where those components are made. Also, proteins and many other materials are made here, and then they get exported. So they get made, it, made, made it. They get made here in the endoplasmic reticulum, and they kind of work their way through and then get spit out the other side. So it's kind of like a maze or a labyrinth that they have to work their way through. Um, there's two kinds of ER, depending on if they have ribosomes on it or not. As you can see right here, there's the little polka dots, there's ribosomes all over it, so we call that rough ER, because when we look at it underneath the microscope, it looks very rough. These guys don't have any ribosomes on them, they look smooth, so we call it smooth ER. Another easy way to tell, the rough ER is usually attached to the nucleus, the smooth ER is not. It's usually farther away. The Golgi apparatus or Golgi body or Golgi complex, again, depending on where you, um, what book you read, um, but as long as it's got the word Golgi, I know what you're talking about. Their job, uh, I think of them as the UPS center of the cell. What they do is they take uh, proteins and they modify them, they sort them, and they package them, and they ship them out. And they do other materials as well, but proteins are their main export. And then these proteins can either be stored inside of the cell, so they'll just kind of hang out in a little bubble, or they'll get exported, like this one right here, and it'll spit out the products. That's how a lot of our hormones are made. They're made in here and then spit out from the Golgi apparatus after they're done with them. Yes, cat, go away. Okay, next one, mitochondria. They look like jelly beans inside of a cell. Um, this is a cut, hi, it's my cat wants to say hi, my other cat. Um, this is a cutaway version of it, so don't rub on the microphone. So you can see what the inside and the outside looks like. 
But basically, if you see a uh, kind of bigger thing that looks like a jelly bean, that's a mitochondria. And their job, take the glucose and the sugar we eat and turn it into ATP. Lysosomes are these little, they kind of look like whoppers. I think I'm hungry because I'm likening everything to food. These whoppers <laughs> inside what they do, they have the ability to lyse or to uh, break. Remember how we talked about hydrolysis? Lyse means to break. So their job is to basically um, act as the stomach of the cell. They go around, they digest things. So if a little bacteria gets inside of there, the lysosome will destroy that bacteria and turn it into little bitty bacterial bits. So this just has lots of enzymes in it that break down stuff. Some animal cells, some plant cells, <coughs> have what are called peroxisomes. And what they do is that they contain hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, that breaks down into uh, oxygen and water, but it also kills bacteria. And so um, if a bacteria gets inside of us, then the little peroxisome, where'd he go? There he is, that little guy who looks a lot like a lysosome, um, will surround and destroy the little bacteria. So this is why we use hydrogen peroxide on us whenever we have a cut, because it also kills bacteria. And the fizzy sound is you breaking apart the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Vacuoles are just big storage containers for water and cellular waste, usually found in plant cells, but we do have big vacuoles in, um, in our cells. We call those fat cells. So there's, hello, there's a nucleus squished to the side, and this is the vacuole, and it okay. stores fat. Yes, you look beautiful. <laughs> and so we do have vacuoles, but for the most part, usually when we say vacuole, we're talking plants. And they're mainly full of water, and that's what gives the plants uh, their water content, helps to make them strong and poofy, um, and uh, help keep them upright. Okay, chloroplasts are also found in plants only. Um, and so what they do, they're kind of like, they look like a mitochondria in a way, that they're the same shape. But they're green, easiest way to tell them apart. They're green because of the pigment inside. And they turn sunlight's energy into chemical energy. Um, basically in the form of ATP, which is that molecule we said that's good for uh, uh, giving us energy. So a chloroplast, we'll learn more about it later, but for now it turns sunlight energy into chemical energy. Cytoskeleton, just like your skeleton, gives your body support. It gives support to the cell, helps to also help cells move. So what we see are these big long blue spaghetti tubes and then the microfilaments, which are these long arms right here. What they do is they just give strength and support to the cell so it's not just a big uh, floppy bag of stuff. In the cytoskeleton, there's two types of materials, microfilaments and microtubules. Microfilaments, like this guy, I think of dried spaghetti. Long, thin, skinny, and not hollow. Whereas microtubules, I think of as, uh, what is that, pin, pinny? I don't know how to say it. That kind of pasta where it's hollow on the inside. And so that's what a microtubule, it's bigger than the spaghetti, it's hollow, spaghetti's not. So microtubules have tubes, microfilaments are like a filament, thin and skinny. Centrioles, yes I know this goes on forever, I'm sorry. Centrioles are modified microtubules and they have um, uh, this complex structure that are found in animal cells uh, during mitosis when the cell's getting ready to split open. They look like, sorry, they look like churros, okay? Just remember that, centrioles or churros. Or uh, for some of you like to call them centrioles. <laughs> um, sorry, kid from last year reminded me of that. So centrioles are uh, always seen during mitosis, usually in animal cells. They can disassemble and fall apart when they're not needed. So you won't see them unless mitosis is happening. Cilia, little bitty hairs that stick out of cells that allow for movement. We have them too, like in our trachea, in our fallopian tubes. Well, not the guys, they don't. Um, and they just kind of wave back and forth and make things move. We have flagella, which now the guys have, is a big, long, tail-like projection from the cell that allows it to move and swim. So we have cilia, are small and numerous, flagella, uh, usually one or two, and really long. So here's an animal cell that you should be able to pick out all the main features. So if you want to, I don't know, screen capture this, print it out, whatever you want to do, but it's got all the main stuff that we talked about in there. 
And so just so you can see the size proportions of everything, how big a nucleus is compared to a ribosome and so on. And just to see what it looks like in other pictures. Same thing with a plant cell. You might want to screen capture or something like that, print it out. So that way you have a nice good picture of a plant cell with the cell wall, the cell membrane, and all its stuff inside as well. All right, I think, yes, that's the last one. So you should be able to have, not tomorrow obviously, but you should be able to be able to rattle off the function, dog, the function um, and the appearance and what type of cell, plant or animal could you find all these little guys in. Okay, thank you so much. Hang on one sec. And uh, we'll go over all these guys tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.